Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be reading 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, all the way through to chapter 2, verse 13. If we died with him. Paul said to Timothy, Hold the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all who are in Asia turned away from me, of whom are Phagelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Remember that Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter. But when he was in Rome, he sought me diligently and found me. The Lord grant to him to find the Lord's mercy in that day. And in how many things he served at Ephesus, you know very well. You therefore, my child, be strengthened in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me among many witnesses commit the same things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Once again, Paul talks about hardship. Don't forget in the book of Acts, it says, through much hardship, we will enter the kingdom of God. No soldier on duty entangles himself in the affairs of life, that he may please him who enrolled him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes in athletics, he isn't crowned unless he has competed by the rules. The farmer who labors must be the first to get a share of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, of the offspring of David, according to my good news, my gospel, in which I suffer hardship to the point of chains as a criminal. But God's word isn't chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the chosen one's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. A little side note. Notice that Paul says that he endures a lot of hardship so that those who have heard the gospel through him might be saved. Those of you who believe that you're saved not by any human works at all, well, I mean, you are saved by somebody's works because if nobody actually worked to print the scriptures, to preach the scriptures, and to travel, who would get saved? So this whole doctrine of not by works, you've got to take that into consideration. Verse 11, this saying is trustworthy. For if, great big if there, if we died with him, it's conditional we will also live with him. If, again, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And remember, that's exactly what Jesus said as well. He said, if you're ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you in the presence of the Father and the holy angels. If we are faithless, he also remains faithful. For he can't deny himself. Now, I just want to back up here just a little bit. And let's just talk about this whole thing about, for if we died with him, we will also live with him. There was a person who was once talking about the imputed righteousness of Christ. And they quoted the scripture where Paul was talking about the imputed righteousness of Christ. But he conveniently didn't talk about the surrounding context of the scripture, which also talked about the imputed death of Christ. Just as it says in this scripture, if we died with him, we will also live with him. Remember Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. That, my friend, is the truth that sets you free from sin, according to John chapter 8, where Jesus said, if you know the truth, you will be free from sin. Remember also that Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 says that if you belong to Christ, if you are Christ, you have, past tense, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and its desires, with its lusts. You 
are dead to sin. And I tell you, my friend, those who are dead to sin cannot sin. Dead men do not sin. Remember again, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, how can you who are dead to sin live in it any longer? To claim the righteousness of Christ, to claim salvation without claiming death to self, without claiming death to sin, is a great fallacy. If you think that you have the imputed righteousness of Christ, if you think that you are clothed with the righteousness of Christ without the imputed death, those people who believe that they are clothed with the righteousness of Christ and that when God looks upon them, all he sees is just the righteousness of Christ, the imputed righteousness of Christ, the, the clothing, as it were, of the righteousness of Christ, and that God doesn't see your sin. Well, those kind of people who believe that, they are the modern day fulfillment of the emperor's new clothes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I dare you. I challenge you to look up the story of the emperor's new clothes. That is what most Christians are like. They are running around believing that they are clothed with the righteousness of Christ, all the while being naked. Remember what Jesus said to the church, not the world, to the church, to those who are supposedly saved in Laodicea in the book of Revelation chapter 3. He said, you think that you are rich, you don't have any need of anything, you are clothed, but you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. There are a lot of Christians running around today, and they believe that by faith they, have, they are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Oh yeah? You don't think that God can see your sin? You don't think that God will judge you for your sin? You better read a little bit more of your Bible, especially talking about the book of Revelation. Read the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, where Jesus said over and over and over again to the church, not to the sinners of the world, but to the believers, to those who are supposed to be saved in the church. Jesus said, I see your works. I see your sin. And if you don't repent, you will suffer the judgment of God and it won't be pretty. So yes, God does see your sin. And if you have sin in your life, if you are struggling with sin, you need to have the truth. You need to die with him. You need to come to that place where you say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Um, can I ask you, how can you sin if you are dead and the life that you live right now is not you, but Jesus through you? As Paul said in Romans chapter 6, how can you, being dead to sin, live in it any longer? You cannot claim salvation. You cannot claim the life of God, everlasting life, without claiming death, without claiming the death of the crucifixion, without saying with Paul, I am crucified with Christ, without saying, as Paul said in, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 24, I have crucified my sinful nature with its passions and its lusts. Therefore, the imputed righteousness of Christ does not come without the imputed death of Christ and the imputed resurrection of Christ. That's what being born again is all about. You can't be born again without dying. You can't experience the resurrection of Jesus without experiencing the death of Jesus. You must identify with him on the cross. You must say with Paul, I am crucified with Christ. You must have the imputed death of Christ before you have the imputed righteousness of Christ. And as always, seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.